Number 1. Erudite. INFJs often have an academic flavour to them, but it is tempered by their social finesse, so the intellectual egghead within them is masked by their people skills. Given their tendency to listen more than they speak, this is a side of them that is often only truly appreciated by those close to them. Number 2. Adjusters. So we are two words in, and I'm already making up and misusing words. Nice. I mean this in both senses. The first meaning is that they are people who adjust themselves for others, usually in subtle and sometimes imperceptible ways. Or should I say, ways that people don't consciously notice. At times, if INFJs aren't careful, they can lose themselves to this trait. They can become all things to all people, to the point where it's hard to pinpoint exactly where their true selves reside. The second meaning is that they are adjusters of people. They can move people around, like playing human chess. Hopefully, and usually, this is with good intent, although INFJs are always cognizant of how easy this ability would be to misuse. INFJs love to manoeuvre people onto the right path for them. How do they know what the right path is? Well, they don't, of course. But given their masterful ability to, well, actually listen to people, pick apart their patterns, and often classify them accurately, INFJs are rarely far off when judging what path a person ought to be on in life. Number 3. Reserved. Despite being high, extroverted feeling users, INFJs don't often, well, extrovert their feelings. They are often private, mysterious, and even secretive. Number 4. Regal. I have often thought of INFJs as aristocratic and regal in their demeanour. They have a gentle energy to them. They are exponents of quiet force, if they ever wish to exercise it, and are almost never boisterous, bombastic, or in your face. Number 5. Philosophical. I think this word best encapsulates their intellectual vibe. They are not purely scientific, or purely humanistic, or purely people-focused. They are some kind of hybrid. The patterns they observe, ideas they analyse, and insights they have are conveyed, almost always, with a wise, philosophical delivery. Number 6. Abstract. The function of introverted intuition, and intuition in general, is largely about being able to look past the details and seeing that things of apparent uniqueness are actually different manifestations of the same concept in practice. It's about seeing the idea as more real than the tangible expression of the idea. Number 7. Symbolic. INFJs love themselves a bit of symbolism. For reasons related to the last word, it simply appeals to their natural way of thinking and viewing the world. They like things that are about the idea or concept primarily. They love hidden meanings, deeper references, metaphors, analogies, allegories, and symbolism. Number 8. Insightful. I mean this in the most literal sense of the phrase. INFJs will let things percolate in their mind and be struck by an insight when a connection gets formed. It's rarely as dramatic as a eureka moment, but on a smaller scale, it is comparable. Number 9. Affable. I was going to go with charming as a word, which is certainly applicable and describes INFJs well, but I wanted to capture the more day-to-day -day version of this trait. INFJs are, well, nice. They are likeable people to most people. That is quite an achievement, and a life skill that serves them well. Number 10. Ethereal. INFJs have an otherworldly vibe to them at times. This is a product of often being in their heads, but without typically being socially awkward. It's a strange combination, like a friendly alien. Number 11. Methodical. This is a tricky concept to get across and partially explain some confusion about types. If you look at certain typing systems, INFJs have TE as their so-called blind spot function. So it's something they don't do well and something they might not even value that much. As I've said before, TE is a function that is exceptional at organizational things. Let's say you were given a to-do list with 10 activities on it and you have to quickly prioritize them in order to get them done in the most efficient way. By efficient, I mean taking the least amount of time and effort. High TE users will nail this in a very straightforward way. INFJs will struggle. However, more superficially, we do talk about J types being more organized and P types being more spontaneous. INFJs have their own way of organizing their lives that is quite different from an ENTJ, ESTJ, or INTJ, for example. Much like other types that value TI, INFJs have mental systems and principles and formulas that, because of their NI dominance, are very cohesive and coordinated. They are 
aren't going to be taking in random information from everywhere for no reason. They'll be much more selective in what they furnish their mind with. It's like they have a bouncer at the door that doesn't let in pointless information, and then a filter that takes the most useful stuff from what actually made it in. So there is this continual process of refinement of their mental models. From this methodical nature, they can organize their life. Number 12. Consider it. INFJs consider how other people will react almost all the time. This doesn't even take effort for them. It's a natural, automatic process that they can do on autopilot. Number 13. Calculating. This word typically has a negative connotation, but it needn't. In order to be considerate, you need to be calculating. You need to simulate the various ways in which people will react. To play through that sequence of events in your mind and figure out the best response in anticipation. In this way, INFJs are always calculating. Number 14. Creative. This isn't often mentioned when we talk about INFJs, but it should be. For NI DOMs, expressing themselves via various artistic means mediums is appealing. Also, INFJs will feel right at home in academic and intellectual fields as well, both of which necessitate certain levels of creativity. Number 15. Resilient. Famous INFJs throughout history have been characterized not by demonstrations of force, but by the resistance of it. The ability to withstand oppressive influences and fight back, sometimes against immense violence, with the power of ideas, of words, of rhetoric, of gestures and actions that, by virtue of their symbolism, are magnified in their potency. Number 16. Equanimous. Equanimous. Equanimous? Equanimous, basically possessing equanimity. Again, against the stereotype of feeling types, INFJs are very emotionally calm and stable, as a general rule. They typically have a peaceful, balanced vibe. Number 17. Enriching. INFJs want to enrich the lives of the people around them, to guide them, advise them, listen to their concerns, offer wise words, and to pick whichever of their many intuitions and insights are the most applicable to solve the person in front of them's problem. Number 18. Measured. INFJs, like their INTJ brethren, are intentional people who rarely act without a reason behind it. There is a deliberate nature to them, an energy-conserving and measured approach they have to life. Number 19. Non-judgmental. Without this trait, INFJs would not be effective with any of their investigations into human psychology. They need to be able to stare at all aspects of human nature, the light and dark alike, without recoil or judgment. Number 20. Meticulous. It feels like you have to say that word in a meticulous way. Is there a name for that? Although this trait won't show up, in every area of their life, most INFJs will have something that they are perfectionistic and exacting about. If you want to see more INFJ videos, then subscribing is the best way to let me know that. Also, if you would like to chat with me and people of many other types, then join me on the Love Who Discord server. The link for that is down below.